What about in terms of working with businesses, manufacturers, economic developers? I would think, you know, you talk about reaching a new crop of students, maybe students or workers who have been out of college for a long time in an industry. That industry has changed, so now they have to, they've lost their job for whatever reason, they have to come back. What are the opportunities there for you, and, and, and how have you worked with business, or how, how do you think you'll need to work with business in meeting those needs? Well, certainly that's a, that's a big part of the mission of all the colleges and universities in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Our two-year institutions in particular really uh, place a great deal of emphasis on worker training and uh, workforce development activities and really have a very close relationship with business and industry, but our universities do as well. Mm -hmm. And we all understand that uh, the best way that we can attract new industry to Arkansas is through having that educated workforce. We also understand that the best way to retain the business and industry that we have now is to continue that, uh, that continuing education focus and allowing those uh, employees to be able to be more efficient and productive for, uh, for their employers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that um, really we have to be, it creates some challenges sometimes because you hear this cry uh, from business and industry or you hear this cry from policymakers that we want to graduate students in uh, technology disciplines or uh, very, very focused disciplines that meet uh, perhaps economic development um, priorities for the state. And certainly we want to respond to that and we understand the STEM initiatives are very, very important. But at the same time, we also know that today's graduate, this world is changing so rapidly that today's graduate is going to change careers three and a half times. And so if they're going to change careers three and a half times, it's important that they leave college with a broad educational understanding that they're an uh, analytical thinker and that they, they can think critically and that they, they read well and write well and they have strong oral communications. And so you have to find that balance between those really technical skills that you know are probably going to be outdated uh, within the next decade while also making sure that you're providing that broad foundation uh, and allowing that student to be a problem solver and a, and a, and a critical thinker. And so um, that's a challenge from a curriculum standpoint that our institutions are facing now. But certainly we realize that moving forward there's going to be a greater sense of accountability on higher education institutions uh, with limited resources coming from the state, with limited resources coming from the federal government. There's going to be uh, greater accountability, I think, from those uh, governmental entities to, if we're providing you these funds, show us the direct impact you're having on uh, the economy and on the workforce of, of the state and of the nation. And so we realize that's important. Our institutions are certainly doing that. You know, institutions like ASU Jonesboro and the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, UALR are going to be more uh, focused also on research and trying to develop mm -hmm. that intellectual capital to bring more uh, business and incubators and having those startups while institutions that have historically been more teaching based institutions are going to really try to provide that educated workforce that can that can lure more industry to the state and help the, the industry that we currently have in place. Right. I see that there's there's a push and pull there that's interesting to me because I'm sure you you would sometimes be faced with a with a big industry or a big business that will donate X amount of dollars to, to make this school happen and, sure. and sometimes you got you got to balance do I really need that as an institution, I guess? Well, you do, and I, you know, I think that the, the one thing that we understand is that uh, it's unlikely, you look at Jonesboro as a perfect example, they have had uh, a large number of economic development success stories over the last five years, really uh, have defied the odds uh, with regard to this economy and bringing in companies like Nestle and Frito-Lay and Unilever and, and, and all of the, the great corporations that have happened there, but I think we understand that if not for that university, and if not for those community colleges in the surrounding communities, if not for the ability that those institutions have to uh, train students and to provide an educated workforce and to provide uh, um, intellectual capital to these uh, uh, to these companies, then they likely uh, locate elsewhere. And so we realize that we play a large role for them, but we also realize that um, those institutions provide great opportunities for us, whether it's an infusion of of uh, funds or in-kind donations or whether it's uh, allowing our students to have practical applications through going and working with some of these companies and internships or whatever the case may be. Uh, it is, it's a two-way street and as you say there can be some push and pull there and at times it can be a little bit challenging but I've been very pleased with the efforts of our institutions and I know that the rest of the state it's, it's very important too that, uh, that we keep that focus. The governor consistently talks about 
uh, the fact that uh, economic development and higher education are inextricably linked and uh, we take great pride in that and know that everything that we're doing is, is going to play a key role in the long-term success of the state.